Donald Mustard snitched on Epic. Donald Mustard snitched on Epic. Everyone in the comments saying I was wrong, have been proven wrong. They're money hungry pieces of <laughs> tin Epic, and that's why he left the game. Woo! Ah. Oh. Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's James, also known as Stratos. If this is your first time being here on the channel, welcome to the team if you hit that subscribe button. If not, and you're just returning, it is always good to see you back here. Why is my little itty bitty logo up in the top corner of that teeny tiny? That's better. Oh my god, oh such a fun day. What a fun day, what a lovely day. Donald Mustard snitched on Epic. Uh, not snitched, wrong way of putting it, but oh my god. This is basically coming back to me the other day, end of one of my streams, I was saying, like, big, big time, big time. They need to turn it around. There's got to be a reason Mustard left. Loads of things were going on. And oh my god, like, f f five days later, Donald Mustard went on an interview and dropped the hottest tea. But for me, it's coffee. So I'm just going to be... Mm -mm -mm. Let's go. First up, immediately, I'm going to have to say thank you very much to... Fire Monkey over on Twitter. That's I Fire Monkey over on Twitter. Fantastic leaker. Drops all the new stuff before it comes out. But this dude has gone through all of it and found the really important things. So I'm going to start ripping through that real quick. And oh, <laughs> oh, it's good. All righty. So we have currently got number one. He talks about crossovers and specifically one of the people that are really irritating to work with, as I can 100% imagine, Nintendo. Donald Mustard's official statement on a lack of Samus in Fortnite. They got really hung up on their characters showing up on platforms that weren't their platforms. Mustard says, Fortnite ran on all console and PC, even mobile at the time, meaning the crossover characters would have shown up on those devices. They would be thrilled to have Nintendo characters in Fortnite, but only if it's on their platforms. Epic would not okay platform-specific characters. For me and for all of Epic, we're like, that's an absolute must. We want to make sure that Fortnite is the exact same experience no matter what screen or device you're playing on. Standard. That's always been the go-to, especially when it comes to a lot of things with Mustard. Like, 100% I feel that is Donald Mustard down to a T. So, like, it, it, basically, the reason we've not had Nintendo-specific crossovers or... Nintendo specific characters for consoles exclusives or giveaways no, whatever you want to call it you know the, the skins from epic it's because that Nintendo wouldn't okay so if you bought the switch Samus would have most likely been the console special skin that you could have had the the special version but they didn't even do it like that they didn't want anything to do with Samus being on PC Xbox PlayStation none of that so they wanted to lock it down and nowadays people are crying out for Nintendo to basically just come into the 24th century, <laughs> it's the wrong way of saying, coming into 2024, where everything is no longer platform exclusive, where you can have these open-ups and you could have Pokemon on Xbox, PlayStation, PC, all of that good stuff. Like, yeah, they want to keep sales on their platform, but there would be nothing wrong with Nintendo opening an eShop or a specific thing, even through Epic at that point, but they're just not interested. So, the next one is... Last season that Donald Mustard had oversaw was vibing. Y yeah, it 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 shows. It really does. Like his last season was the big, vibrant party, like a big sort of farewell. He got Indiana Jones. He got um, Darth Vader, and he had. There was so many different collabs coming in that season. And it was a fantastic season. I loved vibing. One of my last major edits that I actually did on the channel before I started doing these kind of videos that, by the way, have blown up. Thank you so much for all the support. I'm glad you guys like listening to me rant. So I'm just going to do these kind of update your videos if you've missed this kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, after that, it was uh, the, I can't even remember what it was, uh, the lifeless, everything was getting taken over by Chrome and it was a really dull experience after a certain point. You could tell it was like a corporate overtake of a season. However, <clears throat> Uh, when asked about live events, this... Oh, okay, this is something I've already touched on. So this is actually going to go really close to home for me. When asked about live events, this is what he said. It was resources. Mm -mm. Mustard says he would... He would down his work on Fortnite in 2022. The last season he oversaw was vibing the game's 21st season. By mid-2022, Epic was committing to build LEGO Fortnite and Fortnite Racing, the new expansion of Fortnite into a proper multi-game metaverse. We knew that. We knew that was coming. We knew that's what they wanted. Hence, the zero point being the center of the multiverse. Like, the zero point, if you don't follow the story story of 
that is basically like the dead center, the energy source for the entire multiverse. That's why it works and everything, and that's why it's cracked open. And we did the final black hole event, that, and then everything's now as it is. It would go on. It would go live in December of 2023. Yep. To build this stuff. So this is in quotations. To build all this stuff, it would take so many people and so much time, Mustard says. Basically, the event team was starting to be needed to work on other stuff, and it was devastating to me because I'm like, that's actually the game's magic, and not everyone at Epic agrees with that. Thank you! I'm so glad that comes from Donald Mustard. I said that in a recent video and stream, that people are being pulled away from projects that they are genuinely passionate about. And it's showing that these teams are being moved away from things that one, is important to the community, two, is important to them, and three, is actually something we want in the game versus, hey, we need to put more of this stuff in so we can monetize more shit in the platform. It's just not necessary. The fact that these people have been pulled off of what they love and the original events team have been pulled ways away from what they're actually used to doing, having to re-script all this extra stuff that's probably not what they're passionate about so it's not going to get done as quickly like yeah they're going to be fantastic at their jobs they have obviously proven that but these are people and developers not developers these are <sighs> managers they're not leaders donald mustard was a leader he was like this is the vision here's what we're going to go for we're going to do this as a team and talk to the community it's gonna be fantastic so he did that that's what they did but now they have a manager who comes in and goes i want to make baseline here's what we're doing for this your team is working over here now and now you have absolutely no idea of what you're doing and you don't care about racing or lego fortnite and we're cutting events completely it's what the gamers want but it's not what our profiteering investors want this is where they need to just like they need to completely reform the structure of the teams get your investors out of what is controlled in the game when you invest in a game especially if it's something as big as fortnite lethal company something like hell divers these are teams that at the beginning where they are right now two of them hell divers and lethal company are right at the precipice of they are so committed to the fans they love everything about what they're doing and what they make and they take it in turns on the Discord to reply to people, they take it in turns on Twitter to reply to people using all of their fun little different ways of doing it. Fortnite have passed this now where they have billions being invested into them and these investors need to come in with a very specific contract being like we would like this to be implemented or we want something along these lines to be implemented. Not we've invested now we call the shots. This is obviously a game that is struggling right now with investors coming in and saying we've put all this money in and we want to see an immediate return. Like, it, it's, uh, there's something not working right, and it's the fact that Donald Mustard has left, and the team that built everything up, the events team, have been ripped apart for these lifeless cash grabs. Like, yeah, rocket racing is cool, but you could have pulled someone over from the actual, like, uh, what was it that they actually just got? Rocket League. They could have pulled some devs over from Rocket League. Because personally, I'm not a fan of Rocket League, but it handles way better than actual Rocket Racing. This game was built off of in-game events and a team that literally listened to Ninja in Chapter 1 being like, Hey, you know what would be cool? A plunger with a samurai sword through it as a thing. And next day we got the plunger. Not next day, but you know what I mean. Like, it was a community that thrived off of listening to its players and its streamers and all this other stuff and that team has been ripped apart by corporate and the investors and it's all just bottom line we need to earn our bottom line it doesn't matter we can drop these packs you know you, you know how we drop those castles in the trailer yeah that's cool isn't it we're gonna put them all in the item shop at ridiculous amounts like it, that immediate backlash obviously shown so they were like uh oh better like pull the cars in a bit lego fortnite having Paid assets is an issue. It is. It should not be a thing. I understand people play and enjoy it, but it's not a thing. The monetary point of Fortnite right now is an issue. Like, I'm pretty sure they just dropped. So here's the whole... Co oh, God, the whole Coachella incident. Like, okay, so 1,800 for all of that. Not the worst in the world. It's a very ugly, beefy skin, but that's peely all over. I'm going to go immediately, like, these ones are back down to 1,500. That's actually a nice Batmobile-looking car. I quite like that. Like, the, the the Coachellas, I'm pretty sure, that as the Coachella bundle completely, yeah, the big astronaut bundle has disappeared. Like, that's just unnecessary. Like, you can get so much right now. The, uh, that's 1,200. 1,200, you get a skin with edits. What have we got? How many edits we got? We've got four different edits. 
So, fully... Co oh, it don't tell me that's... Yeah, yeah, it's just the standard chrome effect. All right, they just threw that on there. Cool. No no life in that one. Could have done that. Just the head, like, you know, staying skin-colored and the rest of the armor changed. Nope, could have involved the armor even further. Nope, we'll just stick a chrome effect over it. <sighs> I mean, still, that's 1,200 V-Bucks for this. What's that? Four sets of 27, so that's 28 in total levels that you get there as well. You get a back bling. That doesn't get any edit styles. You've got a... Camo, quite nice. Reactive camo, decent. And you've got yourself a pickaxe, 1,200. That is actually a steal. If you guys go ahead and purchase anything, I'd really appreciate if you use code Stratos, but this right now is a steal in the item shop, so I'm going to pick it up mid-video. Like, 100% I'm picking that up mid-video, because, again, you get a lot of stuff for that. You get the 20-something levels, all of the different stuff. That's a steal. I like that. If they brought the prices down... And they put people back where they should be for developing and the actual all of it. They would probably have more people involved again. Like, the events and stuff are the heart of this game. The team should not have been pulled away from that at all. Like, it's it, it's what the game is known for. And nowadays, instead of like, crazy event happening in Fortnite. Whoa, like loads of millions of views. People wanted to come on the game and play and invest in the game. Because, you know, amazing things are happening every single season. And now we've got people who happen to find content. But like, hi guys, welcome back to my channel today. I'm going to be doing uh, medallions only challenge. Because there's nothing else to do in the game. No offense to anyone who actually does that. Because I've done challenge videos in the past. And they can be really good fun. But it's the fact that we're having to do challenge videos on base standard weapons. That are extremely just null, void, boring. And we got one. One new game mode. That is an old game mode that has been rehashed for this mo this season. And everyone lost their minds. Because we've been that deprived of new game modes. One new game mode in a year. Got the whole community going. Whoa! Epic still care! Like, and they don't. Like, it, right now, there are people making decisions that don't care about the community. They're like, oh, cool. How long is that going to take? Mm. Hey, what's the payoff going to be? We don't know. It could be really good because it's going to get loads of people back on, but it also might not be because they might just be coming in to play free for play. Oh, if they're only going to free to play our free to play game, then we're not interested. Get, 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 get over to the rocket racing that we can monetize. All right. The original black hole was Donald Mustard's idea. It, it, it screams mustard. I love it. it. It's just, it's so chaotic and it, it's just such a good way to actually update your game. And obviously it's a lot shorter now because they, they've perfected it to this point where a brand new map takes like well at this point it was a couple hours almost a full day but still like that was awesome uh the original black hole was Mo donald mustard's idea his part of the interview about why he wanted it is below this is a live service game he remembers thinking we are never gonna have a sequel so how do we do a sequel without doing a sequel take the game offline he realized make people miss it and bring it back just different enough for what would be a Fortnite chapter 2. That, I mean, yeah, it worked. People were over the moon and terrified that it was going offline entirely when chapter 1 finished. Like, it, I still remember it. It was one of those. It really was a funny experience to be a part of at the time. Because everyone was coming to me because I was I was the Fortnite guy. It was like, what's happening with Fortnite? Is it true that it's down? I was like, yeah, yeah they've took it offline. There's just a black hole right now. And it was like, what happened? So... You have to go through the entire storyline. Now if it goes offline, it's like, oh yeah, they're just updating the servers. It's not interesting. They don't care. It's just, they're just updating the servers for the next chapter. Chapter 1 going offline? It was like, oh my god, you missed it. Like, the 7 arrived. Like, they're this secret group that are, like, trying to keep the 0 points safe. There was a huge fight last season. It's been exposed and all of this other stuff was going on. And then they crashed a rocket into it and a meteor's been there for, like... This last season, frozen in place, they unfroze it and jammed a missile into it, and it broke the zero point open, and it sucked it in, and now we're all waiting to see what happened, and it's like, it was awesome! It was so cool! And now it's, it's updating, they're just updating, yeah, it's offline for a bit. Yeah, it's like, oh, it's been down for 16 hours, yeah, they had to extend it because uh, the game wasn't ready, and they've uh, basically pushed it because... Um, there was no event to basically give it any reason to be like, oh, wow, that's really cool, wow, that's awesome. It's... Yeah, like... <laughs> Mustard's, Mustard's a genius. It was such hype. With the story, there was so much hype. Uh, a few of us would actually decide everything that's going on at Epic. And so I went to them for the first. I, so I went to them first, he says. They're like, we love it. We support you. Go for it. The marketing team was sk more skeptical. So I went, all right, everybody. Here's the crazy idea. We're doing this and we're turning the game off for a month. I knew it wasn't going to be a month. But people were like, what? 
Really, I just wanted it to be three days, so over six months, we were planning this crazy thing, and I let them whistle it, whittle it down to exactly what I wanted in the first place. See, that's good. So he set the bar ridiculously high on where he was going to be. And it was like, it's going to be a month. We're going to take the game offline for a month. So everyone in marketing were like, oh, oh, no, we can't do that. And then eventually, he knew it wasn't going to be that long, but then he managed to get it down to three days. Like, that's, that's awesome to hear that that was originally like a, uh-oh. Donald Muster's statement on what he wanted for Fortnite to be. Ooh. I wanted to create a place that was basically like being out in the backyard when you were a kid in the 80s or playing with your toys on the playroom floor, he says. There was no one there saying, well, Spider-Man isn't allowed to do this and Batman is only allowed to do this and Barbie can't hang out with Spider-Man. And I'm like, I want to create something where you can hang out with your friends and express yourselves however you want. And yeah, it's... It is, 100%. Like, at this point, I've got a locker that I could build any character from that I wanted to. Like, it is phenomenal how much connect, like control I have over my character and what it is. Like, so for me, it's, you know, my... I Like, I love Paradigm. Paradigm is awesome. Like, I've always liked the space element, but at the moment, I'm running ACDC as my pickaxe. I normally go to, I believe it is, one of the Oaths. Oath. Yeah, there it is. The King's Oath. I, that, that's such a nice pickaxe to me. So I love this one with the shield. And it looks awesome because I just love the idea of like a spectral space knight kind of thing. So Paradigm for me was my go-to with the King's Oath that is my 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 blue as, of, as I've slapped on the sneak logo here. And unfortunately, I couldn't get a pink, but blue and gold, the silver works really well. Like, so I feel that personally on a personal level. Like when it came to Ali A before he got his skin, he found a skin that was looked quite a lot like him. And then he built the back bling and the pickaxe around himself and as i'm sure a lot of us do that aren't you know like content creators slash branded people and even then that's not brand to me like that's not my whatever you want to call it my online identity that's like my perfect combination of a skin and i completely agree with that he has built this nice little paradise where you don't have to have everyone agreeing with how they want to do their skins but they can build it however they want. It's like, oh, I don't like that color scheme, but here's this this uh, this skin recently released with this back bling, and it's actually a really good price, so I'm going to pick it up because I get the back bling, the skin, and the pickaxe with them so I can see how it looks. Oh, and why he decided to leave. In 2023, Mustard decided to leave Epic. He was working on a secret new project about which he'll only say that it wasn't a game. It started to be out of alignment with all of the stuff Epic should be focusing on, he says. Mustard told the Epic CEO, Tim Sweeney, he was leaving. His goal, he says, was to develop technologies and processes to help figure out what it, what is the storytelling medium for the future. And what does that even mean? Honestly, I don't know what it means. But I've got some ideas, and we have some ideas. I like the idea he's looking into new ways to implement storytelling things. Like, that's a really interesting little quip that he's put in there. But it's a shame he's had to leave Epic to try and figure out how to tell a story. Because since he's left, the story has been, oh, Island got blown up, lol. Oh, well. It's back now, because we said it is. Uh, welcome to the new chapter. Uh, we blew everything apart in the... Uh, the universe again, uh, but the island's back. Don't worry about it. Uh, multiverse, lol. Like, it is a shame. Storytelling has definitely gone down since Mustard left, and I think he could have definitely experimented with it at Epic if Sweeney had allowed, or if he had spoken to other people, but it, it, he had to make the best decision for himself. Ooh, okay. And the next one. The island is Fortnite's main character. That's a given. But you can tell by the way I've been talking about the island, the zero point, all of it. It's just, from the start, Mustard wanted Fortnite to feel like it occurred in an evolving world. Other multiplayer games had sequels and expansions or just added new maps. He wanted his game's playing field to feel different. The island will evolve and will change over time so that we can build nostalgia and history within the story. 100%. I feel like we just had OG. We felt that. It was awesome. Mustard recalls thinking that was always there from day one. Yeah, season one into season two and season three, like the meteors dropping in towards the end of the season that got more and more dangerous towards the end of the game. I won a game once because a meteor took out my team, my, my enemy. And it was like one of my early, early wins. And I was like, blown away by it. I was like, oh my god, that could have been me, but I didn't. And I won. And it was like before I was properly recording and doing all that stuff. And yeah, back then, 
a hundred percent it was a lot more than it is now another statement on what donald mustard wanted fortnite's vibe in season to be Mustard also began itching to work on new project and decided to accelerate Fortnite's story. He crammed in some high points. I threw myself a firework show. I got Darth Vader in. I got Indiana Jones in. I've gotten to make sure that I've got all of the stuff in that I needed for me. That's why the season is called Vibin. It's all just like hangout, just a celebration. Yeah, it was. It was an awesome season. The make it yourself character that was in there as well. Very him. The just the powers of all the different things going on like the the flowers the fruits the uh, reality tree it was it was a really good season i mean i just said it a minute ago indiana jones and vader coming in that season was awesome you could tell it was mustard's final go and again it, it had the night theme to it which was awesome like right at the beginning where i actually get one of my favorite pickaxes so thank you for making that that season mustard that pickaxe means a lot more to me now and i will make sure to keep it on and yeah, but it's just one of those, like, really was awesome. And that appears to be a main majority of the highlights. From what I can tell, I, I'll, keep, I'll take another peek around and see if I can find anything. But other than that, those are the main highlights that Fire Monkey brought forward to us, which is awesome. I'm just going to quickly double check and see if Hypex dropped anything as well, because these are people I go to for a lot of the stuff when it comes to new things coming out, emotes, all that other stuff. Mustard said it as best he can. I really hope that they start pulling more towards the game itself and putting more time back in. I hope I hope they put the events team back to events exclusively. And it's just one of those like, oh, it's a lot to unpack. And again, I really hope that they start showing and putting people in more passionate positions that they are, again, passionate about. I, I'd like that they had the identity and the team was clearly passionate about what they were into but we can't always get what we want but from a point of view of someone who plays versus someone who well i have invested i've put a lot of money into this game and i've loved it from day one before battle royale existed again there is nothing on there about save the world and if they put stuff in there for the dev team to actually start doing stuff on Save the World and bring the events team over to Save the World to start fleshing that out a bit more again, that would be huge because then it would open back up Save the World. And it's such an underrated game mode. It is the original game mode this game was designed around and from. And it is such a shame to see the core element of the game not even tended to anymore. Um, yeah, I actually I got a compliment or... Uh, a couple messages saying it's nice to see people talking about save the world as passionately as i do um but the community for save the world is there and people love it and uh, you know you know what i'm gonna go out there and say if this video kicks off again and people see it like it's phenomenal for v books you can get free v books in this game and it is from the original game and it sucks to say people don't even know that but it is what it is if you guys did enjoy and you agree, please, 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 please don't be afraid to leave a comment. I do my best to reply to all comments that are nicely laid out and not just sort of attack. So if you want to have a genuine conversation and a sort of good back and forth with certain aspects, I am more than 100% happy to have conversations with everyone. If you're just going to be in the comments, uh, like a recent video, um, just basically hammering hate towards me, uh, thank you for the free engagement, but I will not be responding to your comment. Like, you are just pure engagement for me. There is nothing quite like having a hater that drives the video to be a bit more engaged. So, uh, thank you. You are doing nothing but help me by commenting angry things that don't even deserve a response. But, yeah, I want to say thank you very much to everyone who has watched. If you've watched this far, thank you so much. Please don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed. And leave a comment on what you would like to see more of, what you've enjoyed me talking about, all that other stuff. As I said, I'm always open to a nice conversation or even just video ideas. So, thank you very much for watching. Have an awesome day, evening, afternoon, or sleep, depending on where you're in the world. And I will see you all, hopefully, in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Welcome to the team. My name has been James and Stratos. See you around.